afraid a key issue driving Indiana voters. So who comes out ahead next Tuesday? And could it be a deciding factor in the balance of power on Capitol Hill? Coming in to see me now, come on over. Mike Tobin and our political panel will join me here at the Indiana War Memorial Museum for a deeper dive on the issues that matter here. Briefing coming to you live from the War Memorial Museum in Indianapolis. You should definitely get here to visit this place. With the Senate potentially hanging in the balance, Indiana voters are taking a hard look at tariffs, trade policy, and the economy, including two key groups farmers and steel workers. Mike Tobin has been taking the polls of both communities. So, Mike, you join me now. What is driving this? Well, what's driving is the size of the industry. If you've ever looked at the shores of Lake Michigan uh, in the northwest part of Indiana, you've noticed all the steel plants or smaller plants throughout the state. It's our number one producer of steel in the nation. If you've ever driven through Indiana, you've noticed 83% of the state is either farm or forest, 60,000 farms. So when the president starts imposing policies that impact their bottom line, the steel workers and farmers in the Hoosier state start deciding if they're going to send the president some support in the Senate. The decision by the Trump administration to allow more ethanol to be sold into the summer months was a boost to Indiana farmers because it creates more demand for corn. However, the number one consumer of Hoosier soybeans is China. Tensions over tariffs resulted in a lower price and greater uncertainty. What we're going through right now with the tariffs is uh, a bit of a challenge. It's a bit of a hiccup right now. Um, we don't know, you know, from one year to the next what those agreements necessarily are going to be. The farmers want to see disputes with China resolved. That means agreements on protections for aluminum and steel as well as intellectual properties. Only then do they stand to see the tariff on their beans lifted. We've drawn a line in the sand, but we need to get these uh, China tariffs issues resolved as quickly as possible. Meantime, steel is booming. Since tariffs were implemented, imports of foreign steel are down by 19 percent. Plants are operating at new elevated employment levels and adding jobs across the nation. For Indiana steel workers, that means job security. I've got uh, two promotions the uh, last two years, and um, I just uh, financially I'm just doing a lot better in my family. And I do have more money in my paycheck now, and I do feel the outlook's good. So when it comes to Indiana's neck and neck Senate race, predictably the farmers, with all that uncertainty, are less certain of who they will vote for. They will still examine the particulars of the incumbent Democrat Joe Donnelly and his Republican challenger Mike Braun. Many steel workers are union and therefore loyal Democrats. However, Jamie Crum says the administration got him more money, more security. Thank you all. So he'll try to give the president another Republican to work with in the Senate. I'm going to vote my pocketbook and my pocketbook's better now under a Republican administration. So if you grow a lot of corn, you're happy with the president, mostly because of ethanol. If you grow a lot of soybeans, you're losing a lot of sleep. You want this China thing resolved so you can make decisions about your future. In the steel industry, the president has won uh, a lot of support from a lot of people who would, who would otherwise vote a Democrat. It's such an interesting place to be, Mike. Thank you for that report. And joining us for more on this, along with Mike, Ed Feigenbaum is the publisher and editor of Indiana Legislative Insight and a columnist for the Indianapolis Business Journal. Dean Hingson was chief of staff to former Indiana Senator Dan Coats, who is now director of national intelligence. And Dean is an attorney with Melman Castiganetti, so he's here with us. Let me go to you first, Dean, because you know the state very well. When it comes to balancing these interests uh, in Indiana, because the industry is so interesting, how do you think the candidates have done so far? I think they've done well, Dana. You know, it's uh, we are the ag story, a top five producer of corn, soybeans, and pork, uh, the good kind of pork. Um, and you know, I think farmers don't like tariffs, but they like this president, and they're giving him. They trust him. They trust him, and they're giving him an opportunity to play out a strategy here. They also want to confront China, and they also want to solve mm -hmm. these issues. On the on the manufacturing side, steel, autos, airplane engines, medical devices. Um, you know, it's it's an amazing manufacturing story here in Indiana. Those supply chain concerns that are uh, emanating from the C-suites of these companies are real. Uh, but the workers uh, employed in those factories, the thousands of manufacturing workers in those factories, those are Trump supporters. Those are the people that put Trump in office. And I think they're willing to give that more time. And what do you see from a business perspective? 
I think the dean's absolutely right. We're hearing from the business leaders, from the from the execs and the, the company officials, that everything uh, just seems to uh, to be okay. But we're we're also hearing from the grassroots and some of the farmers that there are concerns. You know, you've got a 95 percent reduction in exports in August of uh, soybeans to China. You had a, a tremendous increase, like almost a doubling of, of exports of, of pork to Mexico from January through April, and then you know, starting June and July, you saw that kind of stagnate. So mm -hmm. the farmers are concerned. But when you look at the poll numbers, you see that, that Hoosiers are willing to give the president a chance on the trade issues. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of catawampus to what you'd think. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a Hoosier cloak. I got to hand it to you, Ed. For antithetical. Can't, catawampus on, on, it's like the first time anyone's ever said that on this show. You're like, you're going to win a prize. What do you got in your hands there? What's, yeah, what's all that? We've, we talked about trade here. And trade is the, the top issue in all of the TV spots that we're seeing. We're seeing more emphasis on trade here. And Indiana is the most manufacturing dependent economy in, in the country. We're seeing all this emphasis on trade here. Trade and health care is the mm -hmm. other top issue. Mm -hmm. Mike, what do you say? You come to Indianapolis a lot. The president's mm -hmm. going to be here on Friday and Monday, and he was talking to the farmers last week. What did he say? Well, he was talking to the farmers, and he's told them simply that the China thing will be resolved. He didn't, uh, that's not a direct quote, but he didn't give them a lot of specifics. He just said, rest assured, things will be resolved in, with China. And again, that really speaks uh, particularly to the soybean growers. With the steel industry, though, uh, they're pretty happy overall, but what they want to see is a robust, independent steel industry. They're at 79.4% the of capacity right now. What they're shooting for is a sustained 80% capacity. Then they'll feel like they've got their the independence that they're looking for. And one of the points that they throw out is that most of your, in fact, just about all your military hardware is made out of steel. Yeah. The electrical grid, there's only one producer, AK Steel, that makes electrical uh, yeah. quality steel. So they want to see more independence in the event of a crisis. You're not... Uh, beholden to someone else. Dean, I did want to ask you about uh, Brett Kavanaugh. That Supreme Court nomination and the confirmation process took place uh, late August, early September. And is that where you started to see a big split um, between Republicans and Democrats and Republicans kind of coalescing behind Mike Braun because they supported the president? Dana, I think it's a, it, it was not only a driver for GOP enthusiasm, but what you how we know that that's the case is the change that came over the Donnelly campaign after the Kavanaugh vote. Uh, Donnelly has gone so far as to cut an ad in one fell swoop. Uh, he rails against government-run health care, embraces Trump's border wall, and quotes Ronald Reagan. Uh, that is uh, that that's quite a feat for a uh, for a red state Democrat, and uh, that was all in the wake of the of the Kavanaugh. Tell vote. me a little bit about that, Ed. In terms of the, uh, how you see it, in terms of uh, Donnelly is really running as quite a moderate person, and if you didn't if you didn't put labels on some of his positions, uh, you would think that he was a Republican. Well, sure, but but. It you know, if, if you ask my Hannah News Service colleagues in, in Ohio and Illinois and Kentucky, they'll tell you that, that the Democrats there are totally different than the Democrats in Indiana. Right, I get And, it. you know, we, we do not elect liberal Democrats in Indiana. I think the last one we elected was probably Birch by to the U.S. Senate in 70, 76. Yeah, the 70, 76, 74, that's what I remember. Yeah, oh, and, and this is a seat... The Donnelly seat, the Republicans believe that they have a birthright to it. It's the, the seat that Dick Luger held from, you know, yeah. 76 on. Mm -hmm. And they want to get that back. They have essentially, you know, felt that the Democrats have been renting this seat yeah. from them since 2013. Well, we wanted and, experts on Indianapolis yeah. and Indiana politics. We certainly got them. Ed Feigenbaum, Dean Hingson, and Mike Tobin, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks, Dana.